Alright guys, so today I will be doing something different. I'm going to be telling you what you maybe can't do in a lucid dream. I've spoken a lot about the benefits and you know the practical applications of lucid dreaming and to be honest I've spoken about a, v a wide variety of uh, aspects of lucid dreaming but I've never really said what you can't do. And I think it's important to make this video, not just because it's a new perspective, but because there's so much hype in the lucid dreaming community. There's so much energy associated with the idea that lucid dreaming is the be all and end all of personal development. You do this and your life will be incredible. Now, I myself have been perpetuating that hype to some degree. It's hard not to because, you know, lucid dreaming is pretty cool. And it, it does have real world practical applications, but it can't do everything. There are limitations, and there are things that you can't do in a lucid dream, and there are some considerations with this stuff. It's not just the golden magic ticket for improving your life. It's good, but it has limits, and I think this video, this video is more of a, I guess you could say this video is in itself a reality check for people who think lucid dreaming is absolutely everything and the most important thing. Now this obviously will be a bit controversial because as a lucid dreaming uh, you know, teacher or, or YouTuber personality, whatever you want to call me, um, you know, my, my, uh, my main thing is to teach you guys how to lucid dream and to teach you about it and to persuade you that it's awesome and incredible. And it is, don't get me wrong, this video might be a bit confusing, it is amazing, lucid dreaming is incredible and it can impact your life in a very positive way. But I'm going to be talking about some of the things which it can't do. Just to sort of shatter a few myths and to dispel a few illusions so that you have a more realistic expectation of what you can achieve with this stuff. So the first one, that was kind of a long intro by the way, the first thing that you can't do in lucid dreams, you can't learn new information. Now this is a myth and I'd love it to be true, right, but as far as I'm aware and as far as the science and studies show, you can't enter a lucid dream and learn something that you didn't previously know. You can't just like go up to Einstein and ask him to explain the theory of relativity to you in a lucid dream and then him tell you the actual theory, unless you already knew it. Um, now this is the reason this is a common myth is because you can improve things you already know in by practicing them in a lucid dream. Like for example, say if you're a martial artist, say if I always use this example because it's something which involves a lot of physical repetition to learn maneuvers, okay? It could also be anything physical, really. It's it's ideally for physical things, right? So if you're a martial artist, you can practice things in a lucid dream and actually improve at those techniques or moves by practicing them in a lucid dream. What you can't do, however, is go to a enter a lucid dream, go to a library, pick out a book you've never read in real life, and read that book as if you know as if you're actually learning the information. It will be nonsense. What you'll do instead is you'll pick up the book and it will be your your idea of what is in the book. You won't actually know what's in the book. That's that's on the realm of unproven astral projection. The idea behind astral projection supposedly is that you can enter places that you've never been in in waking life and really see what's there even if you're not actually there. It's called remote viewing and it's unproven, wildly unproven. Like no one's ever shown definitive evidence that you can do that. And therefore, I personally don't believe it's real. So yes, you can't learn new information in a lucid dream. You can get inspiration and you can certainly experience new things, but you can't learn new facts in a lucid dream. Number two, as far as we know, you can't physically heal yourself by lucid dreaming. Say if you have a broken leg and then you were to lucid dream and in the lucid dream you talk to your dream guide or whatever, or, and you, or you even talk to the dream itself and say, heal my leg for me in waking life. It won't do anything. Okay. Now, the reason this is a myth, and the reason I'm even mentioning this in the first place, is because it's it's popular to... The idea is popular that you can heal yourself in lucid dreams, or that by po with positive thinking you can really heal physical conditions. Now, that is true to some degree. To some degree. Okay, your positive mental attitude has a huge impact on your physical well-being. This has been shown and proven. But what you can't do is have a lucid dream and and in that dream physically heal yourself of a condition. Okay, you can improve your attitude and mindset and you can definitely you can definitely feel like you're better, um, but a lot of that is the placebo effect and just the idea that if you, if you change your attitude to a more positive one, everything will feel better. You might not physically heal from the condition, 
but you'll feel better about it and you might ignore the pain associated with it for some time. So it's been un it's unproven. You can't physically heal yourself in a loop. However, you can emotionally heal yourself. Say if you have something like PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, or if you have uh, phobias, fears, emotional anxiety, or any anything like that. Really, you can over over time, uh, and you know, with the right guidance and the right work, you can eventually start to heal from these things with lucid dreaming. You can't physically heal yourself, and there's an important distinction to make. Number three, you cannot have a shared lucid dream. You can't enter a lucid dream and then have somebody else, your buddy or your partner or whatever, enter that same lucid dream at the same time and interact with you in the dream. The best you can get, or you know, the closest you can get to that is you can you can have more than one person dream about the same thing at the same time, but you will never be in the same dream at the same time. Because as science shows, when we dream, it's in our head. It's in our individual head, not a collective astral plane, right? This is why astral projection is, is unproven, because we've never proved definitively that there is an astral plane and that we can interact with other people in that plane. What we have proven is that people individually dream and can become lucid or aware in that dream. We've not proven that you can share dreams. And as much as I'd love to believe that Inception is real or you know could be possible, it's not possible yet. And I think maybe in the future it might be, with the help of some really powerful technology or some insane supplement or device. But right now it's not possible to share a dream and it's a myth that you can do so. The reason it's a myth is because it's very popular or common to have a dream about something similar to something else that someone else is dreaming about. Let's say if you and your friend, you're both lucid dreamers and you get excited about the idea of potentially having a shared lucid dream, and so you do an experiment, right? I've done it myself. You say, okay, we're gonna go into a lucid dream tonight and I'll try and find you, right? Sounds pretty harmless, it is harmless, right? But it's not, it's not scientific. You're not, even if you have a lucid dream and even if you see that person in the lucid dream and talk to them, that is not proof that you're having a shared lucid dream because how can you prove that that isn't just you dreaming about that person as opposed to you dreaming with that person? You can't. Uh, you, you just can't, and so that's why it's unproven at the moment. Number four, I think we're on number four. Uh, number f the fourth thing you can't do in a lucid dream. You can't keep yourself in the lucid dream for much longer than you would have otherwise dreamt anyway. So what I mean by that is people have this idea that when they're lucid, or when they learn how to lucid dream, they have this ability to extend their dream period for several hours. I don't know why people think they can do this, but apparently they can, uh, and it's just not true. You know, your REM sleep during your during the night, your REM sleep does not last several hours, it lasts minutes. Um, and so yes, you can extend your perception of lucid dreaming time. You know, if you when you've when you've learned how to become lucid, you often get the idea or the feeling that you're in a dream for longer. And it's not really that you're in the dream for longer, it's just that you're more aware of yourself and everything's more vivid and because you're lucid, it feels like you're in the dream for longer, but you're not actually extending the time the real world time that you're dreaming by much at all. You can have an influence on it to some degree, but you certainly can't have a lucid dream where you're in there for hours on end. So that's it guys, that's the four things that I hear the most often. You know, I just thought I'd cast some light on these myths and hopefully if you guys can leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. You know, maybe you might disagree with me, but this is just my objective opinion. I'm sure a few of the other lucid dreaming YouTubers will have something to say on this subject because I feel it is important to not spread misinformation and to when you hear myths like like the ones I've explained in this video it's important to just stop them in their tracks and say if you hear them just say actually that's not quite true you can't lucid dream for six hours on end as far as we know you can't you can't enter the astral plane and look inside the queen's bedroom you know it's just not true you can't learn things that you've not already learned in waking life in a dream these are myths and I think it's important in the lucid dreaming community to call these myths out and just to be realistic about what you can actually do. And I know this video might seem like a bit of a drag, but to be honest, I think it's better that you know this stuff and that you can approach lucid dreaming objectively and logically instead of approaching it with this wide-eyed sort of anything is possible approach where you think it's the best thing in the world because it's just not true. And you're only gonna disappoint yourself when you find it's not true yourself. That being said, 
it is still an incredible thing to be doing. It's a very positive thing for your life and also the lives of people around you. And you should absolutely learn because there are some incredible things that you can do. You know, there's, there's loads of stuff you can do that really has an impact in your, on your life that you know, can improve your confidence and do all this amazing stuff. And I've got other videos explaining that, but this video, unfortunately, is just dispelling a few myths. So if you liked this video, please go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.